What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can run crisp routes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it can give you some value. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you struggle with knowing exactly what you should be doing during the offseason to improve your speed, your route running, your press releases, all the aspects that go into the wide receiver position, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. It is over 500-plus wide receiver drills and gym exercises with sets, reps, and examples of each exercise and drill for you guys to do, all mapped out on a schedule for you guys to follow. So if you guys want some more information on that, check out that very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So this first example here, what I want to talk about when it comes to running a crisp route is you have to be able to get off of press and you have to be able to get off of a jam from a DB. So this is a bad example of getting off of press. This is Justin Jefferson. Jair Alexander gives him a pretty good pop and knocks Justin Jefferson off balance in the game this past Sunday. So we're showing this example first of Jefferson, and then we're going to be breaking down a good example versus the same type of DB who wants to get physical, who wants to get hands, and Justin Jefferson uses the same exact release. But what are some of the mistakes that he makes, right? Even the best route runner probably in, in the NFL, him, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, top three, those guys are interchangeable, the number one spot. Even these guys make some mistakes sometimes, right? And I say this not to critique him because he's... He, probably doesn't care about my opinion. He's the best wide receiver in the game. But I say this so a high school guy, a youth guy who sees this, who struggles with this problem, can be like, oh man, that's the same thing that I do. This is how I can correct it. So you see when he comes off the ball here and he does this split release. That's what we call this release. A split release is where you bring your back foot up even with your front foot, right? So you're essentially splitting your feet. Now this is a great release to use against a physical DB. It's not like this is a bad release to use. He is coming to balance. He's bringing his back foot even with his front foot. He's in a good base, but the one mistake that he has is his chest is straight up in the air. So many wide receivers make this mistake, which prevents them from being able to get off a jam from a DB. And again, sometimes when a DB lunges at us like this, he loses his base. You see how Alexander's got his chest way ahead of his waist, way over his knees. This is not a balanced position to be in. And a lot of DBs just try to bully wide receivers by getting to that position. So when you give him an easy target, I calling exposing your chest and you're like straight up and down, even if you have a wide base, even if you have quick feet. Even if you have a plan off the line, you're still going to be knocked off balance because you are giving him your entire chest. You have to make sure when we do this type of release, we come to balance with my legs, but I have a slight forward lean with my pad level. So it's almost like you're meeting him in the middle. So when he does get hands, it doesn't knock me completely off balance like this one does here from Alexander. Now, again, this is probably like some kind of cover two concept where he's in charge of the flats and he's trying to purposely be as physical as possible, or it might be like cover three cloud where the corner's in charge of this flats and one of these safeties is coming over playing that deep third, whatever it might be. But still, it's a physical DB and we always want to be able to get off that jam because I know a lot of you get this type of coverage even when it's man coverage. So let's play this full speed and then we're going to show a second example from Justin Jefferson and show how he's able to get off of this. So this is again, he's in a stack formation. This is going to be man coverage right here. So when it's man coverage, you're still going to get DBs like this, especially DBs at the high school level, youth level, who just want to bully guys, right? Now, again, it's fair play to them. That's what they're trying to do. But that is not a disciplined way of playing the DB position because when you lunge, like I said, you lose your base. We just have to make sure we are doing the right things mechanically that I need to do as a wide receiver to avoid getting completely knocked off my route. So let's watch what Jefferson does. He does a split release, but I want you to see the difference in his pad level. I'm going to play this back again just so you guys can see this, but it's the exact same type of release. You see what he does. Front foot goes wide, back foot comes up even with his front foot. But you see how he's got a slight forward lean with his pad level. When he has that slight forward lean and this DB lunges, we are in a more balanced position than he is. So even if he does get hands, even if he pops me in the face like he does right here, right on my neck, he does not have his feet underneath him. He does not have a good base. And when a DB doesn't have a base, all it takes is one shrug and you see what's happening here. He has to grab, he has to hold, we're drawing a penalty, and we're being able to get separation at the top of the route easy way to lose this guy. So against physical DBs, fellas, you have to make sure that we, number one, have a plan off the line. Number two, we are using the right type of release against a physical DB, but we maintain a good pad level. So what are some other releases that you can use here when you got this physical guy right in your face? You could use something called a step back release, where maybe you step back with your front foot, creating some space on the line of scrimmage for you. So when that DB lunges, he really has to leave his base to even try to touch you. That's number one. Now, number two, I would say when you are in this stack formation, you obviously can't do that step back because you're going to run into the guy behind 
you. So what do you do? You do something like this split release. Those are personally the two releases that I teach when you're up against a physical guy. Step back, and it's got to be a quick step back, and I rarely work that because it's just – Sometimes guys overdo it. And they take too much time. They'll do a step back. They do a bunch of moves and then they go up into the route. And yeah, they might have avoided the jam, but you still took forever. And that screws up timing with the quarterback, which we cannot do. So I personally teach the split against a physical guy. Just got to come to balance and got to maintain a good pad level when I do this. Let's play it again. Full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson shrugging off and then being able to get back over the top. Okay, so now, next thing when it comes down to running crisp routes, you obviously have to understand how to win in uncomfortable situations. So this is the route that really got things kick-started for Georgia in that um, college football playoff semifinal game, and this was a hell of a route. There's a wide receiver running a fade route, and he's got kind of like outside shade zone coverage. So how do you do this? Because now, again, remember, when a DB's lined up and he's kind of, you could see it more clearly that he's a little bit shaded to the outside, how do you run a fade when he's outside shade like this? Because if you just take off and run to the outside, and this is when it comes down to being a route runner, fellas, like, yeah, you got to be explosive. You got to be fast. You got to have the right technique. You got to be able to get in and out of breaks, but you also have to have a high football IQ. And we talk a lot about that. So you have to understand why DBs are playing certain ways. So if a DB's lined up outside shade, even just a little bit, what is he trying to prevent? He's trying to prevent the outside route. He's trying to prevent the fade, the out route, the corner route. He's expecting us to probably do one of those things because we either have a tighter split to the line or we are out of the slot. And what do slot receivers like to run a lot of? Drags, and then they like to run a lot of outside breaking routes. So DB lined up outside shade. If we just try to go run around him on a fade, what is he probably going to do? He's probably going to squeeze us to the sideline because the sideline is where he's not trying to let us go. He's going to keep his leverage, and we're not going to have any space on him. So where we have to threaten him is we have to threaten his inside shoulder. We have to close the space. We got to give him a fake inside. They call it a vertical set. And then we could slip back outside. We maybe get him to crack crash on the post because it is still maybe off man coverage. He is still trying to guard us. So if we threaten him with the post, that might get him to move off of his block, off of his platform. So let's play at full speed. So he comes off the ball here, gives a move inside, right? That move inside is what we call a vertical set. I'm going to play this from the up close example too. You step to the inside hard with your inside foot. DB's lined up outside shade, eyes to the inside. It's probably a zone coverage concept. We got to threaten him with that post because that's what can get him to maybe just hesitate. If we just get him to hesitate, that gives me more space to the outside. Now, even if I don't break his ankles and end up wide open, what that allows me to do by closing the space and threatening him to the inside is I give myself space to the sideline. Because remember, if he's outside shade, he's trying to prevent exactly what we are running. So if you come off the ball and you just try to run around him, dude, he's going to squeeze you. Even if you get him by a step, you're going to be a yard from the sideline, and that's not enough space for that quarterback. We need to close space and threaten that inside shoulder, just even if we could get him to hesitate for a second, because all we need is a step on this guy, especially if it's a safety and it's a slot fade concept. So I'm going to play this thing back from the very beginning. Great job by this wide receiver working that vertical set move to get that DB to open up. Up, get him to stink post and stumble so he can make that big play. Fellas, running crisp routes, you have to understand how to run routes. You have to understand the IQ that goes into certain route running concepts because if you don't, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to know when to use the moves that we talk about. Because like that move, what was that called? That was called a vertical set right? The move that we talked about in the very first clip, that split release. If I don't know when to use it, I am never going to use it. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've worked with wide receivers. I've drilled it in their head over and over again. You got to do this. You got to do that versus this coverage versus that coverage versus that coverage. But when they go out on their own time, because maybe I only train them once a week and then I go, they go out on their own time and they don't work on that kind of stuff. They don't think about that kind of stuff. When it comes down, put bright lights on, 11 on 11, they don't execute. They don't do it because they haven't repped it out enough. It is a constant grind playing that wide receiver position if you want to be able to run the routes like how these guys run routes. They're not out there just ad-libbing. They're not out there just, just, just free-balling and, and just doing whatever they feel like doing. It's a calculated process. Listen to any interview with Devontae Adams. Listen, and the best route runner in the game probably next to Justin Jefferson. Listen to any interview with him and look at how he talks about press releases, running routes. Everything is calculated because that's how you have to be to play fast. You can't just be guessing out there.
Okay, so now, another router. This is that touchdown from the national championship from Georgia. I believe this is what either tied it or took the lead. Um, I think the extra point is what took the lead. I want to say this is the touchdown for that. But this is going to be an, like an inside stem. This is kind of like a switch concept here. I think this is more like a reverse smash. I don't remember exactly what the slot receiver did. But we're going to play it full speed, and we're going to talk about the route. So, yeah, this is kind of like a reverse um like smash concept, switch concept, if you will. But this is a great example of how you guys can use a rocker step at the top of your routes to run crisper routes. So let's talk about it. So we're here pre-snap. The play concept is this. He's running something called like a box corner. So a box corner from the outside wide receiver. You go five in, five up, break up to like 15 on the corner right? So it's like a 10 yard corner breaking up to this back pylon right here, I guess you could say. Now, some people will run this maybe five in, 10 up, break at 15 to the corner. That's more like a deeper one. In this situation, because they're on the 10 yard line, it's five in, five up, and then they break. And now what the slot receiver is doing is he's running a flat. So in theory, what we would like to try to do here is read this corner. So if he runs at this flat and the corner sits to the flat, then we obviously have this one-on-one -on -one matchup quarterback who put the ball on a line right in front of this safety. Now, what ends up happening is that it's man coverage. So if it's man coverage, do you think you want to throw the flat? Probably not from a quarterback perspective, right? You would probably want to throw the corner because, again, he's got an inside stem. He breaks up. He's giving himself space to the outside to run this route. So this is an inside release corner route. This is why you have to be able to run routes with an inside release or an outside release because you might be thinking, well, coach, it's a corner. Why wouldn't he take an outside release? It's a designed inside release, number one. But number two, this is how you would run the route normally. Even if you had just a regular corner route from the slot, you have outside shade press. He's giving you the inside release. We have to take it. Now, it's just about having a plan. So when you're at the top of this break here, and we're going to go all the way to the top. If you're at the top of this route, and let's say this DB plays it well, right? Let's say he's right on your hip. You can't stack him to where he is trailing your back hip. What do you think you would do? Because you have all this space to work to the outside. You could take your inside hand, swat him by on his shoulder, swat him by on his hip, and slip underneath him to give yourself space. But luckily, we're able to stack him and get over the top and give a head fake inside. They call that a rocker step. What a rocker step is, is when you go one and then two at the break. Instead of him just breaking off of his inside foot, he starts the cut with his outside foot. He goes outside foot, then inside foot to try to get this guy to think post and try to get him to jump to the inside. So that is just about having a plan at the top of the break. Like my main goal, if you're running this corner with an inside release, is to stack. I want to stack him so I can give him this rocker step at the top. But if he takes it away, I have to be able to react as a wide receiver. And that reaction comes from that throw by. So to run crisp routes, to be a good route runner, you have to make sure that we have a plan. But we also have that reactionary plan if the DB takes away what I'm trying to do. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job with the inside release, being able to stack, and then using that rocker step at the top to be able to create separation, get that DB off, and then win on that corner. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like an eight-week wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule that you can follow, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.